message is brought to you by the Intergalactic Bureau of Tourism. How humiliating. I am fluent in over six million forms of communication, and here I am doing commercials for outer space. Oh, well. Hit it, R2. My name, you know, is C3PO. Wrapping about space, the new place to go. You can eat all you want and you won't gain a pound because there isn't any weight here like back on the ground. We travel very fast near the speed of light. You can leave in the morning and get home last night. His name is R2, but you'll never hear him rap. His inventor forgot to give him lips that flap. He'll greet you all and turn on his charms. He'd give you a hug if he had some arms. There's no gravity when you're out in space. It doesn't pull you down or hold you in place. You can run real fast. Your feet will fly. You'll be so light, you can jump sky high. New worlds open up when you're out that far. And all you've got to do is wish upon a star. A vacation in space is out of this world. Join us now for a flight to the future on George Lucas's Star Tours. With your hosts, Gil Gerard, Ernie Reyes Jr., R2-D2, and Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. Someday we may be traveling through space on ships just like this Star Speeder. But I'm not sure how soon we'll see commercials for vacations in outer space like the one 3PO and R2 just did. With the exception of some brave and heroic astronauts, space travel is still a dream for most of us. It is a dream that mankind has had since the beginning of time. We've always been fascinated by that dream at Disney. So we enlisted the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas, to work with our Imagineering team to create an attraction that would capture the force, sensation, and excitement of space travel. So fasten your seatbelts as we take you on a sneak preview of a flight to the future with the stars of sidekicks, Gil Gerard and Ernie Reyes Jr. I think they're over there by one of the droids. Oh, hey, Ernie, take a look at this. That's a controller droid. It's a robot that was built to do a lot of the technical work on the Star Speeder system. Is it anything like the robots they sell in the electronic stores? <laughs> no. Wouldn't it be great to have a robot to do your homework? Yeah, someday they probably will. Oh, hey, wait, come here. Look down here. Those are the worker droids. They work on the same basic principles as the controller droids, but they're far more complex. Once they're programmed, they can install an entire surgery system in the rocket without any supervision. You know what the best part of a worker droid is? They never ask for a raise, they don't take time off for lunch. You know, I've read all about space and how they built rockets, and I can't wait to get up there. Yeah, I used to feel that way when I was your age, every time I saw Flash Gordon. Who's that? Well, he was sort of my generation's C-3PO, Ernie. Did I hear someone mention my name? Gil, this is really him. Well, it's a real pleasure to meet you. I've seen all your movies on, uh, on videos. Really? Do you buy them or rent them? Uh, well, I... Uh... Are you in charge of building the Star Speeder? Well... In a manner of speaking, yes. I'm in charge of more projects than there are stars in the galaxy. Is R2 helping you? <laughs> there's a first time for everything, I suppose. But yes, he's doing his best. And there's so much to do. Well, when does the journey start? Every few minutes. Oh, it's very exciting. You humans have so much to look forward to. Uh, uh, that reminds me. I must go and supervise a little. So if you'd excuse me. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. There's a cute guy. Hope he knows what he's doing, huh? I can't wait. I hope I get a seat by the window. I'll tell you what, I'll put in a good word for you with C-3PO, all right? Want to go watch the pre-launch activity? Sure. Let's go. Ah. R2? R2-D2, where are you? I suppose I have to do everything as usual. Ah. There you are. I knew I'd find you eventually. I imagine you're hiding there to avoid working on the ship. It's ready. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Prepare to chart a course for the moon of Endor. Hmm. I remember the last time I was on Endor for the Ewok celebration feast. I got so carried away, I almost danced with a Wookiee. I guess I'm just a party animal. <coughs> just you, watch your language. <coughs> yes, I think Master Ernie is very excited, and I don't wonder. Mind you, the first time I was blasted into outer space, I was so nervous, I overloaded my circuit. Now, back to work. 
And just you be careful. I don't want you accidentally sending the star speeder to Hawaii. That would really scare Master Ernie. All those people in weird shirts. Enough to scare a Jedi Master. Anyway, just you stand by to activate the hyperdrive. Arthur, you know perfectly well how to activate the hyperdrive. You put the key in the ignition and you turn it. Really? GPO looks real busy. Yes, well, we better not bother him. There's a lot to do to launch one of these ships. It's not like in the movies, you know, three, two, one, and you're off. Most of what I know about space travel does come from what I've seen in the movies. I guess that many of the people who work in the space industry first got turned on to space watching movies or TV shows. Some of them look kind of silly. Well, not at the time they came out. Remember, Ernie, space travel has been man's fantasy since the beginning of time. And early movies just reinforced those fantasies. Like in 1902, when they made Boys to the Moon, nobody was that interested in the technical side of space travel. They sure don't look like astronauts to me. <laughs> well, you got a point there, Ernie. I'm not sure we'll ever see astronauts wearing top hats while they travel in space. Chris Lang's Woman on the Moon was a little more realistic, at least for the year it was released, 1926. Not exactly a soft landing. When they made Tomorrow the Moon, filmmakers used the best special effects available at the time to simulate weightlessness in space. A no funny thing, Ernie, it doesn't look a lot different than the real thing we eventually saw when they started beaming back television pictures from space. For a lot of people, Buck Rogers was the first American in space. You know I was in there. Well, when you're trying to hide out from somebody, be careful when you peek around the corner. Oh, I can't. We saw him in the observation room. Yeah, that's right. Say, Bucky, you're not really going to Kane's headquarters, are you? Yeah, I'll see right now. Hey, buddy, you take the controls and keep where she is. We're headed for the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. <laughs> Many years later, Buck Rogers was the basis for another TV series. here to train our two friends out there in flight maneuvers, not chase procedures. They have no business being out here. That stolen freighter better be pretty important. Hold it together, Clayton. Help them away. I think I know the actor that played Buck Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great show. And you were wonderful in it. Well, thank you, Ernie. We had a lot of fun doing it. Oh, wait, that was, that was a couple of years ago. When did you see it? Gil, you make us watch the reruns every afternoon in your dressing room. <laughs> well, for the audiences that watched the early space films, entertainment was all they required. But things started changing in the early 60s. When the Russians launched Yuri Gagarin into space on April 12, 1961, and when the United States and Alan Shepard into space, filmmakers had to change their style. Suddenly, the nation was watching the real thing. From the moment that President Kennedy kicked off our space program... We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone. And one we intend to win. The others too. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As a nation, we accepted President Kennedy's challenge. And over the last 25 years, the doorway has been opened by a brave and heroic group of men and women. And all of us who've watched have shared in the pride, the excitement, and the tears as mankind has reached for the stars. Reality is a past fantasy. And it was up to filmmakers to make space films more fantastic than ever before. Films like Tron gave us a totally futuristic look at space traveling. Using all the state-of-the-art techniques like matting and computer animation, 
Movie making joined our real space program and blasting off into the 21st century. After about 70 years of movie making, just when it looked like nothing more could be done on the subject of space, a major breakthrough took place. I know what you're going to say. Star Wars. Right, Ernie. George Lucas' Star Wars trilogy introduced us to a whole new world of space travel, a world populated by Jedis, Ewoks, droids, and a series of incredible adventures in space that would inspire a whole new vista of dreams for all of us. In the first film, we took special effects from a kind of zero point and got it up and running to the point where we i could tell the story that i wanted to tell in space battle fast moving uh, and get the point across special effects are just a tool a means of telling a story people have a tendency to confuse them as an end to themselves a special effect without a story is a pretty boring thing I think what happens in a project when you're with it and with the characters is you fall in love with the characters and you fall in love with the environment. The reality is, is I love that world. I mean, there are friends there. It's like a home. I have a home there. And uh, so there's always going to be a desire on my part to uh, go home again or to be with my friends again. space travel is really like. Well, maybe pretty close. I used to think that Flash Gordon's rocket ship was the coolest thing ever. And all it was was a cardboard box with a sparkler stuck in the tail. I can't wait to go up in space, to the planets, the stars, the galaxy. Attention astronauts, I'm your squadron commander. You have been selected for this mission on Star Speeder 3000 because you're tough, brave, lean and mean, and ready to face any danger you might encounter in space. Your Star Speeder weighs over 20,000 pounds. Bringing it to the launch site at Disneyland meant shutting down freeways, rerouting traffic, stealing off highways. Maneuvering a 10-ton payload into position took every man we had. Construction went on around the clock. All leaves were canceled. C-3PO took command of the Earthlings on the project. Droids never sleep. You men can learn a lesson from that. The onboard computers were checked, double-checked, and checked again. George Lucas ran the last-minute inspections. A final check was made of the hyperspeed mechanism. Gentlemen, you've been trained by the best. You're as ready as you'll ever be for space travel. Now get out there and conquer it. Hey, kid. Take a snack in case you get hungry up there. May the force be with you. And never let me say that on Buck Rogers. Countdown to launch. Two minutes. Astronaut Ernie, do you read me? Buckle in and prepare for launch. Prepare for the greatest adventure of your life, space. You should have a pleasant journey unless something goes wrong, but nothing can go wrong. Go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. 
on board navigator. Take over, please. Good luck, Ernie, and may the force be with you. Hi there. I see they're loading our navigator R2-D2, and then we'll be on our way. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Star Tours 45, elevator platform has been activated. Commence final pre-launch sequence. Roger control, all status go. ST-45, you are clear for takeoff. Contact departure control at 120.4. Copy, 120.4. Stars, Peter. It was like really being an astronaut. I even had my own flight suit. Hmm. At least I thought I did. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had a good time. Well, where were you? Why don't you know from different generations? I mean, you guys probably will fly in space someday. I probably won't. Oh, come on, Gil. We'll have fun together. Yeah? Where are we going? The Moon of Endor. Really? Oh, great. I know a great Ewok restaurant there. Come on. All right.